Welcome to the 2022 uh, paper, question 4. So, part A, the elevation and plan of a table lamp are, lamp are shown below. The design of the lamp includes a truncated cone. So, here's our truncated cone. And in the space provided, they want us to draw a freehand pictorial sketch. So, a freehand 3D sketch of the lamp. Okay, pictorial being 3D. So we can just redraw our elevation and plan. And then color or shade sketch. So make sure we get those handy marks. So the big thing here is one, establishing kind of what this is going to look like from our two, 2D representations into 3D. So I'll just do a quick little sketch here. So I've got a base, which is kind of like a little cuboid. Right? And then I've got this stand for the for the light and there's no hidden detail there so that appears to be kind of a cylinder and then on top of that we have like I said a truncated cone so that's a cone that has been cut okay so that's just kind of a very very rough sketch okay what I want to do is I want to draw a properly uh, proportioned sketch of this so we'll start off with our base. So I'm going to draw this in isometric. Okay, if you want to draw an oblique, you can, but isometric tends to be nicer. Try to go with approximately the same proportions that are given to us there. Okay, and that is approximately square. Draw that roughly. Use little light lines. Okay. Then my circular base for the cylinder will be somewhere around the middle. So I'm just going to draw a little cross there to find the middle. And my circular base, the radius is, or diameter is approximately kind of a third of the way. So there and there. So I've got my elliptical circle there, maybe a little bit smaller, okay, go up vertically from that then, okay, approximately that height then is going to be where my, yeah, about there, that'll be the top of it, alright, and I'm going to have the base of that cone, so this base of the cone will be resting on top of that. So from there, I'm gonna go about that width. <coughs> so about there and there. So I'm trying to do everything in proportion. Draw my elliptical base, well, a circular base, but elliptical in uh, this view. And it's a truncated cone. So I'm just gonna extend that up and draw a cone. And approximately there, yeah, about there, that would be the top. So <coughs> once I've that completed, let's go over where we want to be heavy. Okay, so it's good to show that I've broken down my shape into those elements. Making sure these lines are parallel. Everything's going to be uniform then. So that is my freehand pictorial sketch. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to color or shade. Don't forget to do that. So we can do a pencil uh, render of that. I'm going to pause the video while I do that. So here's my pencil render completed. Okay, I've gone from, I said that there was light hitting from this side. So we've got some dark, right, to light. And I've gone dark on this side, a bit of dark fading to light, just to show some light bouncing. Okay, if you want to do a regular pencil render, you could have done that also. Um, it's completely up to you. Okay, so that's our color or shade complete. 
So part B, fill in the label for each part of the cone shown by selecting from the given list. So start at the top, apex. So our apex is our very top of our cone. Okay, so that's our apex. Our generator is a line on the surface of the cone that you imagine it rotates around to generate our cone shape. So that's our generator. And then we have the base, so our base circle, that's our base. Okay, so on to part C. Shown across is the outline drawing of a bulb to be used in the lamp. Okay, so here's our bulb. Using the given dimension, redraw the bulb on the given center line. So we have a center line here corresponding to this center line. Show all construction lines, tangents, and points of contact. So we have to show all our constructions here. So I'm going to start off by stepping off along that center line. I'm going to measure off all these distances. Okay, starting at the base of 45 to the center and 62, 13, 20, and 5. Forty-five, sixty-two, plus thirteen, twenty, and then five. Okay, and I'm going to draw a line across at all of those points. Okay. So I'll start at the top and work my way down. So I've got a width of 30 on that first line. So let's step off 15 meter side. And it's going to be a heavy line. And we've got a 45 degree angle running back to find the length of the top. So 45 degree angle here. Using my 45 degree set square, 45 on the opposite side. Alright, so even though they haven't labeled it here, we know it's 45 because this is a center line, things are symmetrical. Heavy line there. Then have a solid line coming down to that 30 mark, so vertical line to there, and there, and I have this line coming across the 30 mark. Okay, and now we're coming on to our circles in contact element. So with our circles here, um, I'll start off by drawing our large circle and we'll come back to the join bits after that. So I've got my distance of 45 mil measured. So I'll get my compass, put it on that center point. And I'll swing my arc just to show that circle the full way around. Okay, I know the bottom half of it's going to be heavy so I'll just put that in a little bit heavier. Okay, but we need to find that exact joining. Okay, so that's my circle, and it will come up and look at this arc here. So it's a radius 35. Okay, this is a point on that arc. So the distance from here to here will be 35, and the same out this way. So I'll just extend on those two sides. I'm going to set my compass. The radius 35. I'll swing an arc. So that then from that point I'm gonna swing an arc again. That same radius 35. 
that's that portion of the arc. I'll come across to the opposite side, do the same. So that's measuring on 35 for me. And on that point, swing my arc again. I'll come back and just finish off that circle to join up with that a little bit heavier. So we've shown our construction tangents okay, and points of contact. So these two circles, okay, we need to find the exact point of contact between them. So that is done by joining the centers. So just use a colored pen here to show that. So from center to center. So right here, that is my POC, point of contact. The same on the opposite side. That there is my POC, point of contact. Now I also have this line running down here and here. They are tangential to this arc. Okay? So there's going to be a point of contact between this tangent, right? Sorry, so this tangent and this arc, and that is found by going 90 degrees to the tangent from the center, which we have already done. So just put in a label here to show 90 degrees. All right, P O C, and same on opposite side, P O C. So there are two points or four points of contact in this question. Okay, and um, if you wanted, you could label tangent and tangent there. So that is question four on the 2022.